Adagamus, welcome to the American University of Armenia. At the end of June, Dr. Armin Dekiregian will be retiring from his post as president of the American University of Armenia. Today, we are celebrating his pivotal role in the conceptualization, founding, and growing of the university. This afternoon, several speakers will provide testimonials to his dedication to AUA, its students, employees, stakeholders, and the development and prosperity of the Republic of Armenia. So I'd now like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Lawrence Pitts. He's chair of the Board of Trustees, the American University of Armenia, former provost and executive vice president, academic affairs, University of California, professor emeritus, neurosurgery, University of California, San Francisco. Larry was the chair of the board when Armin was the interim provost and throughout Armin's presidency. So Dr. Pitts. Thank you, Randall. Um, it's a pleasure, Randall. as chairman of the board of uh, AUA, uh, to be able to address you on this terrific occasion. Um, I've known Armin through AUA for eight or nine years now. I joined the board uh, in 2009, met Armin at that time. Uh, we became a whole lot closer uh, in the winter of 2013, when the then president of AUA, Bruce uh, Bogosian, decided to return as a mathematics professor to Tufts. And so AUA was looking for a new uh, president. Uh, we were extremely fortunate to have in our immediate midst an outstanding candidate for the next president of AUA, which, of course, is uh, Dr. Armin Karekian. Uh, Armin uh, has had a relationship to AUA since before AUA existed. So he was here engaged in survey of the earthquake uh, problem uh, in uh, 1998 and 1988, and concluded that uh, Armenia needed an English-speaking university, came back and made the a presentation to a number of people, eventually to the University of California, which thought this was a terrific idea, and UC has been sort of an ac academic uh, partner with AUA over its history. Uh, Armin served as the founding dean of engineering at AUA, uh, served as interim provost, has been a founding trustee, and continues as a member of the board of trustees, and so his heart and soul has been in AUA from the outset. On top of which, there has been a remarkable career over the past five years. <clears throat> the campus, <clears throat> campus has grown substantially over Armin's tenure. Um, the first undergraduate class was just in place when Armin was here. Uh, Bruce Bogosian sort of inaugurated the planning, but Armin really care and his colleagues, and when I say Armin, a lot of this is uh, kudos and congratulations to all of his colleagues, but Armin sort of uh, was here as the undergraduate body went from just beginning to now fully developed, and we've, AUA has now graduated uh, three classes. The class, the, the student body size has increased from about 800 to about 2,000 students. Um, with the growth in the number of students, AUA has grown its programs both for needs in Armenia and to serve what students want to study when they come to university. We've added uh, recently bachelor's degrees in data science. Uh, and uh, engineering sciences and a new master's program in strategic management. There have been a number of individuals, including some in the audience, who have felt AUA should have PhD programs. And we are, in fact, looking at the possibility in collaboration with the uh, uh, Central Bank of Armenia, a PhD program in economics. Uh, PhD programs are very complicated. The Board of Trustees supports this idea, but we would only do that if we could provide really superior quality programs 
And the superior quality is really what is the hallmark at AUA. The, the board is always interested in quality. Armin, the faculty, the staff, the administration, and everybody in the audience is interested in the very highest quality. And AUA strives to provide that and to make it better um, year after year. A number of other things have happened uh, during Armin's tenure. Uh, we've had the naming of the Manugian Simone College of Business and Economics, uh, the Zavin and Sonia Akian College of Science and Engineering, and the Gerald and Patricia Japanjian School of Public Health. So we have, with superb help from our very generous uh, uh, donors and friends, have been able to um, substantially uh, help with the resources to AUA, uh, its endowment, uh, from some of those individuals and many others, including a number of you in the audience uh, to whom I give my personal thanks. Uh, the AUA endowment has tripled from about $20 million by the time Armin started to about $60 million today, which the University of California manages for us. We've had continued expansion. Uh, ASHA is uh, represented here today uh, and I perhaps make some comments. Uh, but we've added uh, substantially to the real estate uh, at uh, AUA. Uh, one building currently under construction for a dormitory for about 60 students, which we hope will uh, open soon, a gift from the uh, from Carol and George, Carol Ann and George uh, uh, Nigerian. Uh, a second building that's in the planning phases. Uh, we have recently completed a student union and a faculty center and amphitheater. We have an application into ASHA that so we hope we hear favorably back on uh, some work in the park behind the campus, both for recreation, for students, staff, and for the community. So it'll be open to the community as well as to create uh, sort of a bio lab, a living laboratory in the park space uh, behind the university. Uh, during Armin's tenure, EPIC, the uh, Entrepreneurship and Product Innovation Center was inaugurated. I had the pleasure last night of seeing a, a dozen presentations from the spring selection of uh, EPIC projects. Uh, last spring they had about 33 applications for their program, 12 were selected, and we saw the presentations last night, some prizes were given uh, by the Akbabian family uh, to that effort. So here again is AUA attempting to bring entrepreneurship and development of new companies and so forth. Uh, in Armenia. Um, those of you, I hope everybody here is on the email list for AUA Insider. You see a constant flow of uh, lectureships, of uh, uh, meetings that are here, conferences that are held here, both for uh, uh, within country kinds of meetings, but certainly many international meetings as well. A number of visiting lectures come to speak to students. Uh, so AUA is constantly enriching its own local uh, faculty and staff with uh, outsiders who come in. Um, there, uh, I'm, I'm proud to be associated with AUA, truly proud to be associated with AUA, uh, as a member, former administrator at the University of California. Uh, AUA has very much the same public spirit that University of California have. UC is one of the best public universities in the world. Uh, AUA, has a need-blind admission policy, so students are selected based on their ability, and then steps are taken to make sure that their education can be funded. Uh, the faculty here uh, is very much engaged in and believes in academic freedom, freedom of expression of students, open dialogue between students and faculty, and on the occasion that I've spoken with uh, students from other universities in Armenia, some of which are very good, the students at other universities are very uh, almost jealous, but at least uh, appreciative of what uh, the students at AUA have. And I hope the students in the audience uh, share that feeling, but we certainly feel that that's an important part of AUA. Um, the, uh, AUA has had a very impressive growth and development over its time, and each of the presidents has taken AUA to a new place. Armand has certainly brought AUA through a very substantial period of, of excellent growth. 
that adds to the quality and the luster of the university. He has created a position of the university in the country to be continuing uh, in its role of interacting with the country, interacting with the government, interacting with industry. And so Armin has provided a terrific launching pad for the new president of AUA, who is uh, Dr. Karin Marquides, who will start uh, here in July. So with some sadness, uh, but with enormous appreciation, we uh, thank Armin for his dedication and hard work over the past five years, and we look forward to another president carrying AUA yet to another goal. So. Uh, the board extends its gratitude and its appreciation uh, to Armin and congratulates you for a superb five-year term here. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Ms. Deborah Greaser who is the USAID Mission Director in Armenia. Not only has USAID ASHA supported AUA in the construction and rehabilitation of AUA's facilities, but Ms. Greaser personally has been a very strong advocate for the institution, locally as well as globally. Ms. Greaser. Good afternoon, uh, dear members of the AUA community, students, teachers, fans of Armin. Uh, I'm very honored to be here today. I want to start by saying that um, the ambassador of the United States was, is, is away from the country right now. She would very much have liked to be here today. Um, she has only been in this country about three months but that is long enough for her to have learned about Dr. Kovrothian. I've been practicing that, <laughs> so I still don't have it mastered. But she has heard enough about you, and she has learned enough about the reputation of AUA um, that uh, she has asked me to represent and send her very best wishes to you. Um, so. As, as, as our previous speaker has already mentioned, um, and I'm, I'm just going to say Armin, if I may, Please. just out of respect for not uh, tearing apart his name, but uh, Armin is, you know, as a noted scholar, not only of many U.S., but also of international engineering societies. He's an elected member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering. Professor Emeritus of the University of California, Berkeley, a visiting professor in universities in Slovenia, Japan, Italy, Denmark, India, and Germany. And not only is he the co-founder and visionary behind the establishment of Armenia's first Western-style university, which is now as old as the Republic itself, but he's the founding dean of the College of Science and Engineering interim post, and as we all know, a well-loved president. Uh, there are just a few uh, exceptional credentials that have steered AUA on its de development path as a beacon of Western science and education, and a bridge between Armenia and the United States. Maya Angelou, who is an acclaimed American poet, storyteller, and activist, once said, People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. These words are especially true of Dr. Armin, and I'm confident that everyone in this room and well beyond will remember him as a true champion of AUA's mission and an academic leader. Armin has fostered an innovative and open environment for students and faculty to learn, to interact, and to, to debate, to create, to experiment, and to contribute to the well-being of their country. As a proud supporter of AUA since the days, early days of its establishment, 
USAID is privileged to have collaborated with you, Dr. Armand, over the past five years. We highly value the role that AUA has played under your leadership in raising a new generation of young people with Western thinking, ideals, and active roles in science, business, governance, and civil society. And USAID is scooping up a lot of these AUA grads to work for us, not only at USAID, but in our, in our projects, and we're very grateful for that. With over $23 million of financial support from USAID, primarily through our Office of American Schools and Hospitals Abroad, or ASHA, AUA has gone through an incredible transformation over the past 28 years. Now offering state-of-the-art labs, a comfortable learning space for its students and faculty to engage in studies and research. And we consider AUA a wonderful, if not the best example, of USAID's legacy in Armenia. An institution that promotes American ideals, scholarship, critical thinking, innovation, and community service. An institution dedicated to strengthening the future generation of Armenian leaders. And we couldn't have chosen a better place than AUA to celebrate USA Ar Armenia's very own 25th anniversary in 2017. So thank you for that generous hospitality. Um, next month, you will be passing on your baton to Dr. Um, Marquides. And on behalf of, of my team, on behalf of the ambassador and the US mission in Yerevan, um, I'd like to wish you the best uh, as you turn this page for brand new beginnings and to welcome Dr. Marquides to Armenia and wish her success uh, and bringing her vision uh, to life in Armenia. We look forward to uh, continuing our productive collaboration with you to benefit the AUA community at large. So in closing, I have a small uh, token, which is right here that I'd like to present to Dr. Armin, and I'll first read it. It is um, from USAID's uh, ASHA, uh, American Schools and Hospital Abroad Office, and it is the ASHA Visionary Award presented to Dr. Armin for his commitment, vision, and tenacity in making the American University of Armenia a beacon of hope and opportunity for the Caucasus region and being an ambassador of mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of Armenia. Dr. Sarkisian has been a longtime friend of Armin and a key contributor to the conceptualization of an American-style university in Armenia. And ever since, he has been a member of the board of AUAF and supporter and advisor to AUA on many initiatives. Dr. Sarkisian. Dear friends, colleagues, I'd like to share with you some memories and some thoughts related to this very, very special event. I first met Armen 30 years ago, which was in, at, at the end of February 89. We were invited to some traditional Armenian breakfast party. Everybody knows <laughs> what is the name of it. And uh, even if, if I don't eat hush, this breakfast became the most memorable in my life. Because it, it was the beginning of my 30 years old friendship and cooperation with Arnold. And what is the most amazing thing is that it is also the starting point for the prehistory of AUA. Indeed, uh, at this meeting, uh, 
the idea of American University first appeared. After the earthquake, horrible earthquake, the recovering Armenia, most of all, needed a, a strong, powerful, and sustainable rehabilitation tool or driver. And as such, we have seen with our men a technical university, American style, built in the Quake Zone to become a bridge between recovering Armenia and uh, modern Western science and education systems to bring to Armenia new ideas, new models of education, and of course to restrict them very dangerous brain drain from Armenia. So this much about the genesis and our acquaintance with Armen. Now some more about Armen. <laughs> uh, on the recent evening, in memory of the first president of AUA, Professor Mira Nagbogian, from the very, very much highly respected role, group of AUA founders, I separated three very special personalities. Mm -hmm. and noting that without very decisive uh, participation and role of each of them, this grandiose idea of American University would hardly have come true, have come the reality. Let me pronounce again these names. Mehran uh, Albadan, Armand Erkulelia, Luis Simon Marugia. Only Armen is with us from this historical trio of co-founders. And we are here today to recall and to appreciate his exceptional role and his uh, service in all the states of, in all the important states of American, of, uh, of the history of American anyway. Uh, beginning from the idea of formation to the present day. Looking back, back from the distance of these 30 years, we can always see our men in that place and at that time when this service is most important. Uh, and uh, let, let us recall for the moment the brilliant way of our men with the university and for the university. Uh, the first author of the concept paper of AUA, then co-founder, and the uh, permanent trustee of the university, the first dean and founding dean of College of Engineering, who brought to Armenia then very much needed program of seismic engineering, interim provost, and uh, finally, uh, unanimously, the unanimously elected fifth, uh, fourth president of AUA, under whose leadership university advanced in all the areas of its activity, it became richer and, and stronger by its human resources, financial resources, management structures, uh, public service, of course by uh, international recognition and authority. Even more, some prerequisites are created for the further growth and for bigger impact on the ongoing transformation in Armenia, on the future of Armenia. Uh, speaking about the future of Armenia, I take this chance to say welcome to the recently elected fifth president of AUA and to wish her good luck and a very successful continuation of the presidential button. Uh, Uh, it's the time to conclude. I know that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Armin uh, today leaves the university presidency, but not the university. He will always remain with his university as the most dedicated friend, as permanent trustee and advisor. And knowing him very well, I know that we will see his many, many other new initiatives. 
in favor of the university. But it remains for us to wish Armen a new and very interesting cycle in his multi-focused, multi-focused, multi-target creative life. Uh, as, a, as a scientist, artist, and educator. Um, I want to conclude my work just saying, you know, expressing my personal gratitude and appreciation to Armin for many years of cooperation and friendship and for all the <coughs> old days we spent we lived together. Thank you. Dr. Aram Hajian, Dean of the Zavin and Sonia Akin College of Science and Engineering, is our next speaker. Armin recruited Aram to come to Armenia to work at the university when Armin was the Dean of the college. Armin mentored Aram, preparing him for the leadership role that he now has today. Dr. Hajian. So thank you, Randall. Uh, thank you all, and it's a pleasure uh, to see the auditorium full, uh, standing room only. Uh, Armin, congratulations. Uh, I think I, I said, uh, Dr. Sarkisian, you're a, a tough act to follow, uh, but I will try. Uh, maybe the first thing I can say is that uh, maybe many people in the room can identify a time uh, something like 30 years ago, uh, when they met Armin. In, in my case, it strangely uh, uh, predates that uh, by a little bit. It was about 31 years ago. Uh, and, I, and I say that because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's fate what happened. I, I was a young uh, student at the time in, in the Bay Area, San Francisco. I was at Stanford, and uh, maybe it's 1987 or 88. I actually can't uh, precisely remember. Anyway, I was a young student. Armin was a young, or at least uh, not, not so old, uh, professor uh, <laughs> back then. Uh, and, and, and it must have been maybe Easter Sunday or some other event uh, where, let's say, people like me, uh, 3,000 miles from home off at university, uh, would, meet, uh, would go to, let's say, the Armenian community, an institution like the church, and meet with other folks from the community. Of course, we have to remember now this is pre-internet, pre a lot of things, uh, pre-earthquake, pre-reborn Armenia. So there was still the Soviet Union, and there was, uh, and I, I was a young engineering student, and uh, already uh, someone like Armin, who is a, already a well-known, accomplished uh, engineering professor at a nearby university uh, would, would, would already be someone I personally would look up to and did look up to. As fate would have it, of course, uh, well, it was maybe literally months later that uh, the tragedy, uh, which the uh, calamity, uh, which we've already referenced today, maybe we'll hear uh, more from the earthquake hit. And then of all the negative consequences, of course, one of the positive uh, fruits uh, let's say long-term infrastructural, you know, far-reaching and, and visionary uh, you know, byproducts or, or, or effects from the earthquake. A positive, a positive effect was, uh, you know, the birth of the university. And, and I won't repeat. Uh, we heard a lot of the, the founders' names, the, the effort, and all that, that went into it. I, 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 I did have to, uh, you know, draw upon. And then again, the irony that there was even a, a very strong earthquake months later in the San Francisco area, uh, just after the, the uh, speed off center earthquake here. And, and again, it's, it's, it is some kind of like almost storybook, uh, you know, engineering, it's a, a trio, uh, right, of professors, uh, two of whom in seismic engineering and civil engineering, and then an earthquake, and then the construction of uh, uh, physically space, a building, another building eventually, 
and a, a, a system, American style, where we pride ourselves that we sort of, you know, as an institution, outlast our own uh, people. Like the people come and they go, and the institution is uh, resilient. The institution is, um, you know, uh, it, it, the institutional strength, as we hear in our accreditation, that we review as faculty members uh, what is our own mission here and what can we do. Uh, so, uh, well, as fate would have it then, I guess I moved to Armenia in 2000, and as uh, was mentioned and uh, Randall mentioned, yes, Armin approached me uh, in 2007, and uh, the next thing I knew, I was here uh, working as what was called then assistant dean um, to Armin. Armin, of course, we heard all the accolades and, and positions he held, but very quickly I, I uh, found myself uh, kind of in charge of what was then the College of Engineering. Uh, I, I am happy to report that we've grown so much that I could not imagine that same thing taking place today. Thankfully, then we were tiny. Uh, but really, under the in, in the last uh, you know decade and a half, uh, I think it's nothing short of you know remarkable the trajectory of growth. We can talk in numbers of majors or in numbers of programs and numbers of students and professors and you know in, in, across the board. I think there's not a a place uh, in, in an axis along which that this institution has not grown in its impact in Armenian society, in regional society, and uh, I mean, I think that lives on in each and every one of our students, alumni, folks who work here, folks who have worked here in the past and, and continue on into other directions. I think that, uh, you know, that speaks for itself. Uh, again, as noted, Armin has been uh, personally for me, and, and I'm happy to say uh, for many, many uh, a mentor, uh, a true intellectual, uh, an academic who uh, genuinely and consistently has reminded us all of the priorities uh, of uh, what you know happens between it's me, the instructor, and my students in the classroom. What happens between I don't know, maybe a dean or a chair or a faculty member and his or her uh, community of let's say researchers or coworkers, staff. Uh, it's really the fabric of the university and the community that uh, he and, and many uh, along the way have helped build that I think is the real testimony uh, to what AUA is today, what it stands for, and at the end of the day, uh, the impact uh, that the institution has. Uh, so I'm, I'm in, not just as a founder, but as an inspirer, inspiration, uh, I think is, is uh, important. Uh, as a, a little almost inside joke uh, between us, I, I tried to pick out a few words in my uh, speech today about the, 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 how much of a more optimized uh, uh, institution this is, how much more reliable, and of course I couldn't help but find on my bookshelf uh, uh, what I meant by full circle and, and kind of uh, almost fate would have it, Armin's uh, own expertise in civil engineering, it's, it's not a coincidence that uh, he has a, a, a book that, we, we, uh, that was held, uh, I'm sorry, a conference that was held here, that he held here, actually, he spearheaded the effort of a select group of fellow uh, civil engineers that we held in, and the title of the, of the compendium of the conference proceedings is Reliability and Optimi Optimization in Structural Systems, which of course has everything to do about uh, civil engineering and, and, and uh, seismic reliability and statistical analysis. But actually, if you read between the lines, I think it has everything to do about uh, the legacy of this institution. And so I think there's some uh, poetic uh, uh, duality or confluence there that I think is, is, is interesting. So uh, I'll end it with this. that I venture to guess that there's not a challenge that this university has faced in its uh, almost 30 years. Uh, that Armin hasn't confronted himself or been a part of, uh, you know, facing that challenge himself. And it's probably safe to say that he's been part of the solution uh, to uh, virtually all of those challenges. So on behalf of the faculty and, uh, you know, all, all of us in the community, thank you and thank you all. Now we're going to have a short video from friends and colleagues.
I first met Armin 30 years ago at the end of February of 89 and we were invited to some traditional Armenian breakfast party and even if I don't eat hush, uh, this breakfast was the most memorable in my life because it marked my 30 years of cooperation and friendship with Armin. When I arrived at AUA in 1992, um, what struck me the most about Armen um, was his passion for AUA. Um, it was palpable. You could feel his passion like a beating heart. Armen Terkevaya, the first thing that comes to my mind is his smile. Unbelievable, unlimited, encouraging. And this was something which I think all of us remember because in 90s when we started our study at AUA. Armenia was a country with changing society. And Terkirola, as a central figure, founder of one of the founders of the university, he played a significant role. I know him since 1991, but personally we started working when I joined the university uh, in 2011. And um, from the day first he was uh, acting provost. And uh, I really enjoyed working with Armin every single day. I mean, there was no single misunderstanding. Everything was clear, transparent. I first worked with Dr. Dargaryan when he was our intern provost. And uh, from that time on, I realized what a humble person he was. And then in 2014, when we learned that he was elected interim pro president, we all were so happy, so delighted that we would have the chance to work with him. Well, Armin helped to establish the conscience of AUA uh, in those early years. Um, continually, one after the other, we had to make difficult decisions, challenging decisions. And it was always Armin who brought up issues and made us think, what is the purpose of AUA in Armenia? Why are we here? What are we trying to do? Having worked with Armin closely over the past five years, I have come to learn that Armin wakes up and goes to bed with AUA in his mind. I would characterize uh, the last few years, me being here at AUA, working with Armin and the rest of the team, as being exciting, quirky, humorous, as well as very difficult. AUA is Armin's creation. He knows so much about AA that it's impossible to fool him around. Characterizing Armin as a president, he is like acting every single moment that he is dealing with his baby. This university is his baby. He's not acting as an administrator. And that's make us very easy to interact and to work together. I think the best way to characterize Armin's personality, especially in the role as president at AUA, is that he's very paternal. And he takes everything as if, well, AUA is his child, he gave birth to AUA, and if any of his children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren misbehave, <laughs> uh, he takes it very seriously and has to ensure that everybody gets back into line. Dirk by itself as a person is uh, very dynamic. He always comes up with new ideas and he's not the one who throws the idea and forgets about that. He tells you the, about the idea and after that he follows, tries to help you to see what has been done. Everyone here knows that it's very, really easy to communicate with Dr. Armin Terkirarian. When he's available, you can warmly greet him in the hallways, have a lunch with him in the cafeteria, and even sometimes, I at least have the privilege to sometimes have little talks with him in the hallways. He's a very interesting person for me and a very good friend. He cares about every single thing and that makes it easy to work with Armin because he's, he, he knows everything from inside because he interacts uh, very uh, in a humble way and gives people an opportunity to present their opinion very openly. This helps to solve issues. The biggest lesson that I have learned from him, and I think all of 
think anyway students is to be humble always so no matter what achievements you have in life and we all know he has had many achievements uh, to <clears throat> always be modest and be able have the ability to talk to a freshman student as an equal Working under his leadership has been amazing, an amazing experience. It's a big family. When I come to work, I feel like I'm leaving one home, coming to another home. He he's always very careful, very caring, and um, very very helpful. He is always there to help, to advise with anything we need. He is encouraging and inspiring us a lot. We you know that Armin leaves the position of the president, but he doesn't leave the university. And I'm sure that he will always be with his university as the most dedicated friend and maybe benefactor of the university. Uh, and uh, of course, as advisor, very important advisor, and of course, permanent trustee of the university. I'm very glad that Armin is going to continue on the board and his uh, advices and his help will be instrumental. So we're very thankful for having Daddy Armin uh, with us for these years and obviously we'll miss him terribly. I wish our beloved president to uh, always be surrounded by people like him, um, people who have the courage to spread their positive energy around, to cheer the people around up, and um, I also wish him to be surrounded by people whom he loves. Of course, we all will miss him. I would like to thank you, Dr. Dergeo, for everything you have done for us and for me personally, for being an amazing person, mentor, leader, supervisor, and for just being who, who you have been. Thank you for everything. Our next speaker is Ms. Anahit Ordian, Assistant Vice President of Operations. Anahit was a member of the first graduating class in 1993. From student to alumna to employee, she has been a member of the AUA community since it opened its doors and one of the university's most vocal and passionate cheerleaders, Ms. Ordian. many alumni and staff members in this full auditorium. So let me share some reflections on behalf of alumni and staff members. First, when did we, the first students of AUA, meet Dr. Dave Kuberia? <coughs> December 1991. A terribly cold small auditorium, the first applicants in coats and gloves, taking an admission exam called GMAT, perhaps for the first time in Armenia's history. The stress of the exam and the stranger exam administrator who was not as great as today. <laughs> After an hour, we could not fill our pens. It was bitterly cold. We were in peril. The stranger professor was moving back and forth on the stage, apparently to warm up. He could move. We could not. <laughs> and all of a sudden, to our pleasant surprise, the professor said, please close the exam brochures, stand up and shake your hands and fingers. What a relief that was. Though he looked strict, he also appeared to be kind. It was later that we learned that this strict and yet kind professor was AUA co-founder, Dr. Armen Terhugan. We learned from him some very interesting details regarding the founding of the university. The idea of AUA was certainly grand, but there was no funding for it. As Dr. Mihran Akhavian describes in his book, he and Dr. Stejkurekian wrote 50 letters 
to various funding agencies and individuals, describing the project and asking for support. Most of them responded critically, referencing the earthquake and the war, saying that it would be a wasted investment. Only the then president of AGBU, Ms. Louise Simon Manukya, responded with interest expressed in just two lines. This is an excellent idea, and I would be happy to support it. Dr. Apobian and Dr. Teshkurevya went to meet with her to discuss the project details. Imagine how they felt when they heard a somewhat insulting question. Who are you? <laughs> to our prominent professors from USC and UC Berkeley, and known figures in American Armenian community, the question came as a shock. She continued, I don't want to deal with individuals. What institutions are you representing? They realized at that moment that despite all the excitement and love for homeland, serious institutional structure needed to be in place for its sustainability. Following that discussion, then they approached the UC leadership and signed the agreement about academic support and collaboration, and then approached the government of Armenia which kindly provided the building of the convention center, one of the finest buildings in the city. In May, a month ago, I was watching a TV program where Dr. Carolyn Najarian and the benefactor actively working in Armenia and Artsakh after independence was saying the following. I did not visit Armenia for the past 12 years. It is so surprising compared to the way it was. You open the faucet and the water runs. You turn the switch and the light is there. <laughs> Indeed, the conditions at the time of the university's founding were much, much different. It is easy to say today, but difficult to imagine what love and determination one must have had to live the comfortable life in the US and face very difficult conditions in Armenia. Through hardships, and friendship, Dr. Armen Derkurevyan quickly became Armen to us. And he never complained about the conditions, but shared the feelings and experiences of the whole nation. However, many at AUA, faculty among those, did not take that adjustment very well. The story I was told is that a faculty member, I believe that was Michael Conrad, arrived at Yerevan Airport in 1992, and after seeing the old airport and the conditions, said, I'm not going to leave the airport. I will wait for the next plane and return to US. The administrators at the time hardly managed to convince him to change his mind. Faculty recruitment was not an easy task, especially in those years, but not surprisingly, Michael and many others fell in love with Armenia and continued to renew their teaching contracts for years. In 1994, we took our faculty to Lake Sevan for a sightseeing tour. The engineering college faculty member, Yang Yen Yang, told me the following. I was happy to be invited to teach, but until the last moment, I thought I was going to Oakland, California. <laughs> I thought the American University of Armenia was in Oakland. <laughs> After signing the employment contract, I received a phone call from Dean Tej Kyurelia, who surprised me by advising to take a flashlight, <laughs> work code, and other necessities for cold conditions. I said, why? What happened to California? <laughs> Only to realize that I would be teaching abroad. But ultimately, I am so happy that I ended up coming to this part of the world to discover this ancient country and its wonderful people. Years ago, when I had a chance to conduct research work in the United States, Armin gave me Professor Dr. Narbe Hachaturian's telephone number. I did not know people in the town. 
Dr. Kajadurian was Armin's former professor, and he immediately treated me with immense hospitality. He proudly shared that Armin was one of his best students. This is when some people had told Armin, you are not going to make it in the US with your last name. How can we pronounce Gurelian and plus there in front of it? <laughs> and yet, with national pride and professionalism, Armen not only proudly continued having his last name, but also attracted the attention of his multinational colleagues and friends to his national identity and the rich history and culture of our great nation. <coughs> Making personal sacrifices has been Armin's lifestyle. Since his birthday happened to be during the week of graduation, for decades he missed celebrating it with his family. <coughs> and our dear Nelly Deshkurekia strongly supported Armin throughout all these years. Despite all sacrifices and challenges, with an equal and deep love for the homeland and the nation, she became part of the almost 30-year AUA journey. And of course, Naira and Sebu understood it fully and supported themselves. We are thankful for all of that incredible support. The university truly opened new doors for its graduates. As Amalia Kostanyan, one of our best valedictorians, said at the graduation, we have become strangers to our families strangers in the most positive sense of the word. We have a different sense of self-confidence, a different sense of time and efficiency, a different sense of optimism and future, uh, about future and opportunities. However, the labor market and the work environment in Armenia were not ready to openly and happily receive the change agents in the earlier years. A graduate of 1995 from business school was hired by an Armenian company upon graduation from AUA. On the first day of work, his employer said, good morning and welcome. So you graduated from AUA. Now tell us what is it that you know that we don't know? And our graduate modestly responded, I will do my best. In two weeks, he created a database, conducted a correlation analysis, and shared with the management that the investments are not being done in the right direction. The company could be more profitable with more attention to a different market segment. After two months, all his co-workers would visit his office asking for advice and guidance. The knowledge received at AUA was the power that had established his authority. AUA has provided a shining beacon not only to students and alumni, but to staff, for whom it has become an employer of dignity and excellence. The university mission gives a sense of meaning to each community member, be it a technical staff member or a manager. We told that Bob Armin has a very strong weakness. That's his unconditional love for his compatriots and for their well-being be it in Armenia, in the US, or anywhere else. Be he she a PhD student, a scientist, an artist, a singer, or somebody else. No matter how busy he might be, Armin would always find time to address the concerns, to help and to respond positively. He has surprised us in many ways. How can an accomplished engineer also be a successful fundraiser? Once, as we were asking for contributions towards the Alumni Scholarship Endowment Fund, I was disappointed that a person who could have easily given $500 contributed $50 only. When I shared my feelings, Armin said, unfortunately, that's the reality. People are different. Having and giving do not always go hand in hand. And yet, with the same energy, he continues to strive for any donation that can contribute to AUA and its various projects. Secondly, how can an engineer be a great editor? You would think the USAID ASHA applications were perfect and there was nothing else to change, and yet he would come back to you with insightful comments. 
Also, despite all his work and deadlines, he almost never misses a Philharmonic concert. It was at one of those concerts when I asked him if it would be possible, acceptable, to become a university pillar as a class. And with his encouragement, that would be lovely, the pioneer class is proud today to have a name plaque on the AUA 100 pillars wall among the most respected names of AUA founders, trustees, and major supporters. Lastly, dear Dr. Tejkuragyan, we know that now you will have more free time and you plan uh, writing textbooks on engineering. That's good. <laughs> But how about writing the second book on the U.S. history for us and for the generations to come? Thank you. Today's student speaker, Margarita Dadian, is a member of the AUA Student Council and president of the Speak Up Club. Margarita. Thank you, Dr. Rod. <clears throat> I'm just a little bit excited. Sorry for it. <laughs> Dear students, faculty, staff, and guests. I wanted to be inclusive of all of our community members to stress that it was also you who believed in the vision of our retiring, beloved president, Armin Dergyurevian, regarding the university, and it was also with your help that we have now what we have and are today here for this important occasion. We are here to show our respect and love for our beloved president, Armin Dergyurevian, as he is retiring after five years of service as president to our university. Though Dr. Dergyurev served our university for only five years as president, his commitment towards this institution dates back to, to the 1988 Spitak earthquake, when the idea to start an Armenian, American style university in Armenia was born. I should like to mention that it was during Dr. Dergyurevian's presidency that AUA grew its undergraduate program and gave the opportunity to younger students like me to study here. Thus, the ability of the university to make a positive impact on Armenia became more prominent. He became a role model for us students with his patience, kindness, open-mindedness, and diligence. And this is all true. <laughs> Dr. Dergyurevian made a difference in our lives. It is from him that we learn that a president, a person of the highest leadership position, can stand in the line in front of in cafeteria and wait until it is his turn to take something, just like us, fellow students. With his example, he changed our mindset about how people of the highest leadership role should act. This made us love and respect him more and we were able to boast in front of our non-AUA students regarding the environment that we are studying in. I noticed many times that Dr. Dergyurevian walks in the hallways and stops in front of announcement boards and looks at the event posters. I didn't pay much attention to it because I thought that the president participates in community events only when he is invited. <coughs> When in the scope of our club, we organized an event and we're thinking about inviting the president, we thought that our event is not that important so that the president should come. And we didn't do it. And we also thought that we should go through a long bureaucratic process, just like it is in Armenia, to get approval or to, to, so that it is declined. That's why we didn't invite him. And imagine how surprised we were when Dr. Dergyurevian came to our event, said somewhere, and he was carefully listening to the students. And then at the end, he came and thanked us for it. And then we realized that it is just his way to show respect to the students who are heavily involved 
in the community. Dr. Dergurelian made and continues to make a difference in students' lives. He made the area a place of enlightenment with the help of professional faculty, spaces for learning, such as the collaborative study space, library, labs, and newly built faculty center and student union. <coughs> Think critically and creatively, learn independently and communicate effectively. He became a role model for the students as he, with his character and behavior, always showed a bright example worthy to follow. On behalf of the student council and student body, I should like to thank you for the university and for your commitment and willingness to invest in our future and make a difference in our homeland, in Armenia. Thank you. Mr. Beres Satrakian is a partner of DLA Piper and president of the Armenian General Benevolent Union. AGBU, as you've heard, was one of the three institutional founders of AUA, and ever since a strong supporter of various outreach and programming initiatives. Mr. Satrakian. Your Excellency, Larry, Armin, Dr. Merkides. It's really a, an honor and a pleasure for me to be here to pay tribute to a man I have known for at least as long as AUA existed, but I was lucky I have known his wife since childhood. <laughs> so. I can speak freely. Uh, I remember the first days when, uh, after the earthquake, the country was in shambles. Nobody knew what was going to do. Everybody was trying to help through the means that he or she had available. And at that time, three pioneers led Dr. Mehran Akbabian. Armin and Dr. Karamir Mardian came up with the idea initially to rebuild, I think, the uh, uh, seismologic center which was destroyed in Gumri. And after a while, with the wisdom also and the vision of Louis, late Louis Simon, the idea came with the independence, why not to have it in Yerevan and try to call it the American, an American Institute for Engineering. And they, nobody in their wildest dream, especially Armin who was there from day one, I don't think that you ever thought that you would be sitting so comfortably in such a comfortable <laughs> chair, in such a beautiful hall after 25, 26 years. And here we are. And Armin with his colleagues has been a pioneer who during all this period, lived day by day and was a, one of the main instruments and elements to turn AUA what it is today. I think I joined I, I, uh, the board of AUA within the first year of its existence and since then I shared with uh, various moments with uh, Armin. We had many discussions, sometimes conflicting positions, sometimes together against other conflicting positions. But I think that we are all proud with the achievements of Armin during his career with AUA. And if you think that this is for retirement, you're wrong. Armin will never retire from AUA. Armin, it has been a pleasure and privilege serving with you. I wish you still you are very young. I wish nearly also together that uh, you will continue enjoying both San Francisco and your second home, Armenia, and will remain in touch. Thank you very much for all you have done. Thank you. Our next
next speak speaker is Minister Ari Karatunya, Minister of Educa Minister of the Ministry of Education and Science, Republic of Armenia. AUA works with the Ministry on various projects for the advancement of higher education within Armenia, from inter internationalization to inclusion. Dr. Haratuni. Mr. Rhodes started from 1st of June. I'm the Minister of Culture and Sport as well. <laughs> Dear friends, our men, it's my pleasure to be here and to deliver a speech to you, a short speech. And as we are in the American University of Armenia, at least one should speak, speak Armenian, and I'm going to switch to Armenian. Our men, in some hours, uh, Իհարկես կարջ ժամանակը հատվածում, բայց մեզ պատիվեր աշխատել ձեզ հետ։ Ժամանակը կարջ էր, բայց ինձ համար հանգիստ էր և արդյունավետ էր աշխատել։ Եվ ես շատ կուզեի, որ Հայաստանի Հանրապետությունում ուհերի շատ ռեկտորներ որովհետև ձեր գործելավոճը նոր Հայաստանի ժամանակների գործելավոճը և դուք այն դրսևորել եք վերջին 30 տարնի ընթացքում Հայաստանում և կարծում եմ որ ձեր շատ ուսանողներ այդ դրական փորձ վերցրել են մասնակցել են Հայաստանի փոփոխությանը և մասնակցել են Հայաստանի փոփոխության։ Ես գիտեմ, որ դուք ձեր գործունեության ընթացքում հատկապես նախագարության Հայաստանի ամերկյան համարսանը լորջ առաջ ընթաց է ապահովել, ես դա դրան հետրվել եմ ոչ միայն Եվ կարծում եմ, որ բոլոր նրանք բոլոր նրեկտորները, որ հետագյան կպոխարնեն ձեզ և նոր նրեկտորը, անպայման էդ բարյավան դիրտները կշահարնակ են և կզարգացնեն։ Հիմա երկու անակն կալ ունեք ձեզ համար պարանտե� Եվ ժամեր առաջ մի այդպես լավ լուր ստացանք, այս կարևոր մի պաստաթուղ թե նախըլ է հրամանագիրը, ստորագրվել է երկ որ առաջ, Հայաստանի Հանրապետության նախըգը ձեր շնորել է Հայաստանի Հանրապետության կաղաքացիություն։ Եվ ես մի հոքր անակն կար Հայաստանի Հանրապետության, կստության, գիտության, ուշակ թե սպորտի նախարդյան կողմից ձեզ է շնորվում են ժամանակ դա կստության գիտության նախարդյունը, կստության գիտության նախարարի ոսկ է մեդալ որ արմենը երբ որպելինի Հայաստանում, իսկ 
And now, with no further introduction, our minutes, your turn. <laughs> As you can imagine, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I'm uh, very grateful, uh, extremely grateful to all the kind words that were said on my behalf uh, here on the video. On video, sometimes I was thinking, are they talking about me? <laughs> uh, Thank you all for being here. I'm honored and humbled by your many kind words and warm wishes. Uh, it has been a tremendous privilege for me to be the president of AUA for the past five years. I thank the Board of Trustees for entrusting me with this responsibility. And I thank my AUA colleagues for their support, commitment, and friendship. It has been an honor to lead such a dedicated, reliable, and capable group of faculty and staff. What has given me the most joy, however, has been the daily interactions with our energetic, bright, and courteous students, and the frequent interactions with our alumni. It is for them that the university exists, and it is their success that strengthens our purpose. During the course of one's life, opportunities arise at unexpected moments. I'm sure during my life, many such occasions have presented themselves, which I missed. There is at least one such case, however, when I grabbed the opportunity. It was 30 years ago, the last Sunday of February 1989, when with a group of Polytechnic faculty, we were having a breakfast of you already know, Hush <laughs> and Babka at the home of late Suren Kevorkian. Taking turns around the table to suggest ways in which the diaspora could help Armenia, Yuri Sarkisian, the rector of the Polytechnic at the time said, it would be good to bring the American style of higher education to Armenia. The idea immediately seized my attention. I thought of the American University of Beirut, the possibility of setting up a university in Armenia based on the American model, an entity that would serve as a bridge between Armenia and the diaspora. I told Yuri that I would pursue the idea. When something is destined to happen, if necessary, planets will line up. That is what happened in this case. The first planet to line up was Mirnat Babi, a highly respected and widely recognized leader in the Armenian community. Two months earlier, he and I had been together in Armenia as members of the US reconnaissance team dispatched by the US National Academy of Sciences to investigate the effects of the Spitak earthquake. Together, we wrote a proposal to set up a, what we call then Technical University of Leningrad, based on the American model. The second planet to line up was Luis Manukian Simon, the then Vice President of AGBU, who responded positively to our proposal committing fines. The third planet to line up was Stefan Karamardian, the then Dean of Business at the University of California, Riverside, who joined us to set up a business school. The fourth planet was the University of California, and specifically its provost William Fraser, who agreed to lead a fact-finding mission to Armenia 
to determine if grounds existed for starting an American university here. A number of other planets lined up to make the idea of the university a reality. These included Theony Condos, special assistant to Bill Fraser, Carl Pister, the former chancellor of UC Santa Cruz, John Markham, the director of UC Education Abroad Program, Vili Karatunian, the, uh, the Minister of Education and Science at the time, Tsova Kabakian, the Deputy Minister for International Relations, and of course, Yuri Saksian. These individuals brought passion, commitment, and perseverance to make what seemed as an impossible dream a reality. If you visit the fourth floor of the west wing of this building, you will find their portraits adorning the founder's wall. Unfortunately, many of the people I just mentioned are no longer with us, but their legacy at AUA will never die. The story that I told you is now a history, but it is always important to know how things happen as history defines our identity and charts our future. Recognizing the difficulties and challenges that were overcome makes it even more important for us and future generations to take get good care of this institution. I never forget what the chair of the visiting laws team said to me. She said she had never visited a university where the faculty, staff, alumni, board members, and even students had such strong commitment to the institution. We all realize what we are doing at AUA is not merely providing education to students, we are building the future of Armenia. I find being part of this building process to be tremendously rewarding and gratifying. Glancing over the past five years, I'm very proud of the many accomplishments we achieved. We completed the undergraduate program and graduated three cohorts. We introduced three new degree programs. The number of students and full-time faculty more than doubled. We introduced a rigorous faculty promotion process and established faculty teaching excellence and research awards and allocated faculty and staff develop development funds. For the first time in the history of the university, we eliminated budget deficits. Thanks to our major donors, we also managed to more than triple our UC held endowment. I'm particularly grateful to our major benefactors, the late Luis Manukian Simon, Zaben and Sonia Akian, and Gerald and Patricia Trupanjan, after whom we have proudly named the College of Business and Economics, the College of Science and Engineering, and the School of Public Health, respectively. At the same time, we were able to expand our facilities by acquiring additional land and building new facilities, such as the computer lab, the entrepreneurship and product innovation center, the student union, the faculty center, the amphitheater, and the residence hall and the Nigerian Center for Social Entrepreneurship, which are currently under construction. We are deeply grateful to the American Schools and Hospitals Broad Program of the USAID, which has funded many of these developments. Of course, most of the credit for the above accomplishments goes to my colleagues who have worked tirelessly and effectively as a team to make them happen, and to the Board of Trustees who provided us with guidance and support. Please accept my heartfelt gratitude for all that you have done. As I contemplate my retirement as the president of AUA, I'm certain that the university will be in good and capable hands with Dr. Karen Martinez at the helm. She brings years of experience as an academic leader, including nine years as the president of Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden, and a highly impressive scholarly record. As the first non-Armenian and female president of the university, she will open new directions for the university's advancement. I congratulate her 
on her appointment and express my readiness to assist her in any way that I can. In closing, I want to extend my sincere gratitude to the committee that organized this event. I'm deeply touched by their generosity of spirit and the wonderful work that they have done on my behalf. Last but not least, I thank my family, my children, Nairan and Seppo, who took time off from work in California to share this important day with us, and my, my wife, Nelly, who three years ago decided to put her teaching career on hold so she could uh, visit me more frequently and for longer intervals. All three have been fully supportive of my mission, and Nelly in particular has been a full partner all along. I look forward to spending more time with them all. Thank you very much. I would like to invite to the stage Ashok Azarian, Vice President of Operations, Gevor Good Union, Vice President of Finance, and Nelly De Corregian, staunch supporter of AUA. university community. This is the first pin we, our communication team and our team, all of us created for Armen and I guess we have already polish <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and the first one goes to the president and this is a new tradition that we all will carry the pins starting from today. Oh. to Nelly to invite everyone to a reception. If you would just proceed outside in the hallway and outside in the patio, please join us in celebrating Armin's career. Thank you very much for coming today.